Hi everyone, Sean Humphreys here. Welcome to this edition of the Tay Charger Change podcast. In this podcast, we'll talk about the link between health and wealth. Welcome to the Tay Charger Change podcast. In this podcast, we'll help you to lead a more resilient professional and personal life by sharing great content to make you smarter, more energetic, emotionally healthy, financially confident, so you accomplish your professional and personal goals in spite of the challenges that are sure to come your way. After working for over 30 years in the wealth planning industry, at a common sense level, I've always felt there was a link between mental, physical, and relational health and a person's income and net worth. Well, once you start digging into the data a little bit, there certainly is at least a correlation between these two areas. Over that same 30 years, I've had the chance to go to conferences literally all over the world to hear top-notch portfolio managers and business executives or CEOs talk about their investment ideas and businesses. Now, anecdotally, most of the speakers look pretty fit and seem to be maintaining their ideal body weight. And when you talk to some of them, they embrace often uh, health as an integral part to their success and future success. They truly believe and apply the, the notion that they are corporate athletes and their health and energy is vital to their success personally and for the success of the enterprises they provide leadership to. Does their approach have application to all of us in the work world? I think it does. In my own personal life, I've been very fortunate uh, that I've enjoyed and embraced an active lifestyle, training and racing for triathlons and other multi-sport events since the mid-80s. I know that the disciplines I've learned and the health benefits I've enjoyed from these activities have a, had a direct and positive impact on my professional career. Now, I know that for many of you listening to this podcast, the notion of regular exercise is not something you would naturally gravitate to. However, you don't have to be training for a triathlon to get great benefit through introducing consistent activity and healthy eating into your day. So if you're serious about wanting to improve your professional productivity, you need to be thinking in terms of the corporate athlete model. Now the starting point is how much do you really want professional success? If you're okay with status quo, you can stop listening to the podcast. Um, but if you want to make changes and take things to the next level, or if you're at a high level already and you want to maintain it, then you need to focus on all aspects of professional life, including health and wellness. If you pay attention to this area, it'll pay great dividends financially to you in the medium to long term. To help you with this process, make sure you go to our website, download the free ebook, The Resilient Professional. We have in there information on purpose, cultivating vision, mission, and habit formation strategies. That information is really critical to launch you into this area with sustained energy, enthusiasm, and the necessary strategies to make progress. Over the years, we've often, as a practice, run um, you know, financial workshops for our clients, but we also feather in there topics on health. And sometimes the clients kind of shake their head a little bit, but we've, I think, over the years convinced them that attending to the health area has a direct relationship to wealth planning. So I want to spend a few minutes going over some research, a few bullet points that I've come up with. The links to some of these articles have been included in the show notes for the podcast. For example, in one study of students found that those who were physically fitter could absorb and retain information better than those who were considered not fit. The researchers also found the same kind of results for adults. At a common sense level, this isn't completely surprising. Exercise increases blood flow and delivers more oxygen to the brain, thus making you smarter. One practical action step out of this idea is to consider starting your day with a brisk workout or a walk so you show up to work with a sharper mind. The researchers also made note of something they call the general mindset. In other words, whether business goals or fitness goals, the general principles are the same. So if you can stick to your fitness goals and make progress consistently, you're more likely to have the necessary follow through to achieve your financial goals. So there's a strong correlation between those things. Let's look at the area of missed work days. Healthier professionals simply are present more. Better health has the potential to increase immunity and reduces the risk of other health problems, leading to less sick time. There's no doubt that chronic absenteeism can be a real negative drain on long-term earning power. And unfortunately, it can be used as an unfavorable means of judgment by superiors to those who have influence over your career. So it's an important area to be mindful of. Let's look at sleep. 
It's not surprising there's a correlation between sleep and income. Improving sleep can obviously lead to higher quality of life generally. So we know that poor sleep can lead to hypertension, diabetes, depression. And admittedly, sleep and higher income connection is a bit of a chicken and egg problem. Like, for example, people with higher incomes can afford to hire people to perform mundane tasks. This could save them time during the day and potentially allows them to get to bed earlier. However, the research confirms that improved sleep quality for workers at all income levels can improve financial outcomes. And that's because better quality sleep will provide more energy, better memory, better cognition, fewer mistakes. Anyone can benefit from the improvements in sleep quality. So improved sleep provides for the ability to focus more effectively. It improves confidence and psychological well-being. Right? And that came from a study that was done by the uh, University of Georgia back in 2007. So again, there's a link to that study uh, in the show notes. So regular contributor, an author to Forbes and Fortune magazine and financial journalist commented that some of the fittest people he knew were CEOs of organizations that he routinely interviewed for various pieces that he was writing on. Now certainly the observation was not an exhaustive research study. But as he reflected on it, he was struck by the common thread between most of the successful CEOs that he came in contact with. They seemed to embrace, generally speaking, a healthy and active lifestyle, healthy eating, and actively pursued strategies to reduce stress. These are likely all strategies that we should be applying in our own lives, no matter where we are in our careers or where we are in terms of our professional aspirations. So there's no doubt that there's a relationship between finances and health status and our behaviors. It's a complex area, but what we do know is that unhealthy choices are often expensive. For instance, obesity can lead to higher food costs, more drug costs, and there seems to be a correlation between financial wealth and our health. So the next time your financial planner inquires about your body mass index, your blood pressure, or whether you're getting regular exercise and eating a healthy diet, it just might be because they're trying to improve your financial health and wealth. Well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Take Charge of Change podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, The Resilient Professional, for more information that would be very helpful for this topic. All the best as you pursue professional and financial resilience.